What do you think is happening here? Well, it's really hard to say. No one has any good uh, theories that I've seen for what suddenly caused Bitcoin to surge so much after really not doing anything for a long time. I do think it's striking the way every coin moved higher today, including all of the garbage ones way down on the list. I do think that uh, brings to mind some questions about is the is the uh, crypto winter really over or is this just a uh, another blip? So, Sonny, you know, what's your take? Obviously, we know you're always more positive on Bitcoin. Assume you're pretty happy about this. But why do you think it happened? Well, I'm not really sure, but it shows how global Bitcoin trading is. A lot of times these price spikes seem to happen late night in America, early morning in Europe, but always midday in Asia. So it shows how powerful Asia is mm. in the Bitcoin trading market, which I think is very ex exciting and interesting because Bitcoin truly does trade 24 seven around the world. Um, but from a fundamental perspective, I don't really know either as to what caused this move. Technically, the market's been a little skittish. I talked to my traders today and they said, you know, once it goes past 4,300, the resistance level, it kind of zooms from there because there's not a lot of demand either way, actually, in which way the market's going to go yet. So, Joe, we know that volatility has been more stable, but other things that have concerned investors, hacks on exchanges, market manipulation, has any of that stuff changed? No, it doesn't feel like it to me. I mean, the fundamental issues that people have raised, particularly around uh, security, things like that, it's not like there's any more regulatory uh, clarity or anything like that. So I think all those concerns remain. That being said, Bull markets often start in anything before all the questions are answered. And if you wait until everything is resolved, and this is speaking for any asset class, if you wait until everything is resolved and you got, uh, you know, security taken care of and institutional monies come in, and then by then it might be too late. So it's certainly plausible that you could have a, a bull market start with uh, so much uncertainty. And I do think it's interesting that even though nobody can explain why there was uh, such a sudden price surge in the middle of the night, the price is held. It's not like it immediately went back down and people uh, and their selling was resumed. And I think that's an interesting uh, phenomenon to take note of. Sonny, what sort of things on the regulatory and institutional side are improving in your view? Yeah, I think every day, again, that Bitcoin stays active is a, is a plus for the Bitcoin industry, right? So regulations in America are pr pretty stable that way. Europe's pretty stable as well. What would really boost the market, I think, is if you see countries like China, India, or Russia, the three big ones that have really been, the governments have been not allowing Bitcoin to be allowed in those countries. If those three countries, any of those three countries change, you could see a big boost to the industry, actually. But as far as, you know, the fundamentals, you're still waiting on companies like Fidelity, which kind of did a soft launch to launch in a big way. Goldman Sachs to get in the space, a Square, um, even a, an ETF from a BlackRock or something like that. Once those big companies come in, but as Joe said, by then you might have missed the a boom up on the way up. So there's a lot of institution money on the sidelines that's waiting to get in. And maybe they think now is the time because the bottom might have already been hit. But Bitcoin is still far from mainstream. Joe, what are you going to be watching this year? You know, what would bring make you more optimistic? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very skeptical that we'll see anything resembling uh, mainstream uh, adoption anytime soon. I'm very skeptical that we're going to see, you know, a whole lot of day to day use case anytime imminently. I think, you know, there are certain parts of the world and certain uh, functions for which cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin in particular, makes a lot of sense. So obviously anywhere in which the government is cracking down on people's freedom to transact, uh, on people's ability to move wealth in and out of a border, in and out of banks. That is a potential opportunity, I think, for Bitcoin. So the more we see people use it, not so much in the broad sense, but the more we see people use Bitcoin in the narrow sense, where there is like a very logical case why Bitcoin offers something that traditional payment rails don't, that to me would be a good sign of it continuing to take hold. Sonny, where are we going to see Bitcoin being used in, as Joe says, a more logical case where there actually are benefits to using it where there isn't with traditional currency? Yeah, so again, I think Bitcoin has a lot of regional use cases around the world, especially outside of America. So it could be 
remittance type, using it for remittance in Asia. You can do it as a, a currency hedge if you live in Latin America. People use it as digital gold, right? People use it in, as a, a kind of online payments mechanism that don't have credit cards. Um, at BitPay, we just signed up a Fortune 500 company called Avnet, which is a, one of the largest IT providers in the world. They use this for B2B payments so people in Asia can make multi-million dollar payments buying hardware equipment using Bitcoin because it's cheaper, quicker than a bank wire or credit cards aren't possible. So you're starting to see that use case really develop around the world that's outside of America, where in America, most people just use it for speculation, but outside the world, Bitcoin is really catching on fast.